Hello and welcome to today's video. I'm Will Gerling, I'm a sports and performance nutritionist and today I'm gonna to talk to you about oh, taurine and its effect on thermoregulation and cycling performance. So here's our participants. We had 11 males, no females, and they had a 46 millimole VO2 max on average. It was a double blind crossover trial, so they did both sides of the study. And they did a total time to exhaustion on their bike in a heat chamber at 35 degrees. They looked over the results of RPE, temperature of them, total time to exhaustion, and sweat rate. Nice. They had 50 milligrams per kilogram body weight, two hours before the trial of taurine, or compared to placebo, which is maltodextrin. And the results, total time to exhaustion went up, so they lasted longer at a ventilatory threshold with taurine. Local sweat rate, sweat rate increased, so their ability to reduce skin temperature also improved. And then RPE went down, so they felt like they weren't working as hard. And core temperature was down. These results are really cool, and they're not, it's a novel finding. Taurine hasn't been looked at this way before and its effect on thermoregulation. So there's a lot we can take from this and potentially hypothesize. What do I think it's in application for things? First thing is there's only 11 men. Uh, it is a double uh, crossover trial, double line crossover trial, but it is still only 11 guys. They weren't well trained. 46 millimole VO2 max means they weren't, you know, super well trained to cycling and there may be some effects from that. The biggest, the biggest thing about this and the li limiting part of this study is that they didn't uh, monitor nutrition. It's a total time to exhaustion at ventilatory threshold, which is going to increase the amount of um, glycogen usage and they didn't monitor pre um, one day or two days feeding of carbohydrate amounts. So that's, and we also, we know that increase in temperature is going to increase glycogen usage. So by not monitoring that amount of carbohydrate they're having the day before, they're leaving themselves open to a huge flaw in their own study. And when you've only got 11 people, that is going to become a bigger part of potential results. The application to females is a bit different though because like a study from someone called Lara et al 2016 it showed that sodium loss within sweat tends to be on the lower side for females over males so there is a gender difference there and that effect will show in a heat-based study um, especially time to exhaustion but it's still only an aspect and I think there's still a lot we can take from this and I think the how affordable taurine is i would probably still use it with females despite this this is done without them being acclimatized to heat as well so this is specifically looking at people who are not acclimatized to heat and are kind of thrown into a hot temperature and then need to perform granted it's not in highly trained individuals but i think the risk and reward is there and you taking it two hours prior to that event or exercise is going to improve your ability to perform, rate of perceived exertion, sweat rate, and so on. It is important to remember though, they saw an increase in localized sweat rate. So obviously if you're sweating more, hydration status will be affected. There's a lot of take homes from this study. And I think it should be taken with a pinch of salt, but risk and reward is really in favor of this if you're going to an event where you can't acclimatize taurine is inexpensive and it's a great option if you are at mercy of this kind of event but always consider that nutrition is a major factor you're still going to perform better um, at ventilatory threshold if you have carb loaded as if um, compared to not carb loading loads of take homes from this but i think if you're in this situation it's worth it You can find lots of taurine in these, but it's not enough for us to really get the effects that we're wanting. This only has 0.4% taurine in it, where we need 50 milligrams per kilogram body weight. So if you're like me and you're 100 kilos, that's a lot of taurine to have. You'd be better off just buying a pure powder supplement.
Pow pow. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed today's video. Drop a comment below, let me know what you think. And I'd love to hear from you telling me if you've had any blunders in the heat and your terrible stories um, of them. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Bye.